right, let's touch on a few more of the projects from your mm -hmm. time at Film Roman in the 90s. Um, you worked on a show called Crow yes. with the Children's Television Workshop. Right. How mm -hmm. did that uh, partnership come about? Uh, there was this book called The Way Things Work, and, uh, uh, and the Children's Television Workshop had the rights to it. So they came to us about uh, uh, producing a series based on on the book, and and the book is really tells you all the technical things of how levers work and bullies and this and that. So it it, it wouldn't make very much uh, interesting um, entertainment if you just did what was in the book. So we had to create a world where you could learn about these things kind of in an interesting way. Where, uh, so the, the word crow is like from Cro-Magnon, where uh, this, and the, the, the theme of the show was, there was a scientist, uh, a young girl who's Hispanic, who uh, is in the Arctic and uh, finds uh, this uh, um, elephant uh, frozen in, in this block of ice, it brings it back to her lab, and uh, it's, a, it's a, like a woolly mammoth, and, uh, uh, and, and melts it, and uh, so the, the woolly mammoth is, is, comes alive and starts, uh, and, and it talks, so there's an interreaction between the scientist and this woolly mammoth that had survived from way back in the prehistoric uh, times. And uh, so when the, the scientists, the, 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 each episode starts off with there's some kind of a problem or uh, do something. It says, well, in the old days, we had the same problem, blah, blah, blah. And so then you go back to, to the, um, the caveman days, uh, Cro-Magnon times, and how how they were discovering how certain things worked, how they, and, and, and it was done very, very, very uh, uh, cleverly, because uh, we developed it with uh, CTW, and uh, and and so uh, that 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 was on uh, on ABC for a couple of seasons. Did they have any previous experience producing the show? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Workshop, uh, an yeah. animated special uh, or an animated I don't know. Series? I don't know if they had done animation before, but you know they they'd done a lot of. Uh, the, the, the Muppets kind of things, but uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure whether they've done animation before. But, uh, but they, they were real nice to work with, very, very nice uh, group. Well, let's talk about another series you had mentioned briefly, The Critic. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. How did that project uh, come about? Who did you work well, with on that? Again, that, that was uh, through Fox. You know, they had the rights to, to this uh, uh, property, and uh, uh, I don't know. Who, who developed it, or, but it, it came through Fox, and so we just put a unit together, and uh, and working with uh, the the Fox uh, team, you know, we we produced the show, and uh, and again, it was uh, I thought it was a, a a very very clever show, because it, the 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 main guy was just you know. Uh, Kind of a, a nerd, kind of a thing, but uh, he's kind of self-defeating kind of a guy, but who was a, a, a critic, and uh, but uh, uh, I think it only lasted two seasons. Again, uh, I, I don't know why it didn't catch, because I thought it was very well done. You know, there, there was some uh, uh, nice stories, but uh, it's, it's funny you, can, you kind of never predict what's going to hit and what's not. Uh, did you uh, interact at all with John Lovett, who did the voice? No, 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 no. Once, once we, uh, 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 what we get from a Fox is the the track. You know, they're, they're in charge of all the writing, and and recording the voices and all of that. So uh, we, you know, directly we've never uh, dealt with them uh, on, on a day to day basis. All right. Um, some of the other shows um, you did, uh, film Roman did Mortal Kombat. Yep. Mm -hmm. Animated series. Yeah. And, and again, uh, see, th this is one of the things I was talking about, not doing things, uh, having a, a look or a, a style to the studio. Because this is like a superhero kind of a show. 
and it had to have its own look. You cannot make it cartoony because you would you would miss out on the, on on the impact on the on the, the the comic book you know superhero kind of look, and and so uh, so you just have to produce the shows uh, to their strength, and 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 and, that, and that's a, it was a kind of a very graphic looking kind of a style uh, for the characters, and, and again it's you know. It's totally different than a Garfield or a Poppy's world. Uh, what about the mask? Yeah, again, th that, the mask again was uh, kind of a combination between the real cartoony stuff and uh, and uh, Mortal Kombat, where th it had humor. You know, it was based uh, again. It was based on a movie uh, with Jim Carrey, and uh, and and again, the character in the movie was like a cartoon character, like a Tex Avery character. And so, so we had that uh, uh, ability to, to play that into the, the characters. You know, the animators could have fun with that. The other characters were, you know, but this, the mask itself, you could push it to, to a lot of different uh, uh, directions. Uh, Twisted Tales of Felix the Cat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Felix, and uh, Felix is probably the one of the very first animated uh, uh, pictures. In fact, the very first image ever on a television screen was, was Felix the cat. When, when, they, when they were doing the first test pattern back in, back east, uh, t uh, experimenting with television, they had a camera in one room and a receiver in another. And they put a Felix doll on, on uh, one there because it's black and white, and, and that was the very first image ever on television was Felix, and, and so and, and so a lot, a lot of uh, Felix has a, to me had a, this tremendous history uh, back to going back to the twenties uh, where they were doing the theatricals uh, and uh, where animators were learning about animation. I mean, uh, they, there had never been animation, so the artists were just starting to move things around, see what worked, and they were having fun. And so they were able to try establish new, this new medium, a a a animation. And so, so Felix was there at the very beginning, and uh, and so were, were the very kind of fun, wild things to. Later on in the 50s, there was uh, the, the Felixes that were done by uh, Joe Oriolo, where he's got a little magic bag, and you know, there's uh, things that the, the, the other characters um, that Joe created. What we try to do on, uh, on the ones that we did, we try to use the original one because uh, I think uh, CBS was interested in, in the fun of, Gar uh, of uh, Felix. They, they, the, um, and uh, the artists loved Felix, but they, they, their connection was to the original, having the fun, the, 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 where the animators were just learning how to move things around, and there was a lot of fun. Uh, and so, uh, so that was our basis to it. We used a little bit of the Joe Real influence, but most of the influence was from the early, uh, uh, very early Felixes. Um, Seabear and Jamal. Seabear and Jamal, and that, that, that's uh, uh, another, people always ask me, where do you come up with your ideas for new shows? And uh, the, the, this is a perfect, perfect example of, um, uh, of creating a show that we had nothing except the voice again, like Howie Mandel. All uh, well, we had the voice of uh, a Tone Loke, a musician, a rap artist, and he's got this deep voice. Hey, Mr. Robin, you know. And uh, so, how how do you create a show just on a, on a voice? And so uh, again, getting together, working with uh, writers and. Uh, and, uh, and getting a development team. So what, how can we use this voice to this best advantage? So, okay, so we made him a, a teddy bear, uh, a sea bear. And uh, 
who uh, talks to the kid. The kid uh, and uh, the bear have a relationship. Nobody else can understand it, but uh, uh, he gives him advice, but kind of like a, with an attitude. <laughs> it's from, uh, th we don't know where this bear's come from, you know, what his past is, but he's, he has an attitude. And so this little kid learns about life, you know, because his father works all the time. His grandparents are there, but, you know, and uh, the, he has a dog who suspects that the bear is talking, but uh, he's... <laughs> uh, so, so we built several elements that, that made it very interesting. And, and again, I, I, I think it was a terrific show because uh, it had educational qualities about, uh, you know, getting along, and not, not so much, you know, in-your-face educational, but it had positive messages about, uh, you know, working together, getting along, that kind of stuff. And uh, and trying and, and effort and you know the, uh, the, so there were some very nice messages. And, uh, um, how about Bruno? Bruno the kid. Okay, that's another <laughs> uh, another one of those. You know, wh how do you come up with these ideas? Again, uh, uh, Bruce Willis. Uh, uh, his brother came to us uh, about uh, uh, maybe doing something about. Uh, uh, with Bruce, because uh, Bruce, uh, you know, had some daughters, and he wanted to do something else, that different from this big macho dude that he plays on the screen, and something maybe for for kids. And so, uh, uh, his brother said that uh, Bruce's um, nickname was uh, Bruno. He called him Bruno. So okay, well, let's make Bruno the kid. You know? So, uh, so uh, the kid is. Uh, Again, we, we try to create a world. You know, where, how can we use this as a as an interesting thing? So the kid is, uh, is a computer whiz, but but he's created this computer internet um, uh, alter ego that uh, the CIA likes and hires him to go out and resolve all these uh, uh, international kind of uh, capers, but not realizing that he's a kid. And he goes out and, <laughs> and resolves them, and, and comes back and, and in time to to have dinner with his parents, or or, or be back by the time his parents are back from the movie or whatever. You know, but so it, again, it, it, it create these worlds and uh, these uh, uh, challenges, and try to keep each episode different and uh, and fun. And now another show that. Uh uh, film Roman has uh, been involved with, still ongoing, is King of the Hill. Yep. Talk about that series a bit. Yeah. Well, again, uh, that uh, was um, uh, Mike uh, Judge. Mike Judge, thank you. <laughs> Are you going to edit this? <laughs> and Mike Judge uh, came to to uh, uh, Fox with this idea. And uh, Fox liked it a lot. And so again, you know, we were at the right place at the right time. And uh, again, it's, it's, it's proven to be very, very successful. And, and I think when the, comparing it to uh, The Critic and, and King of the Hill, uh, my take on it is The Critic appealed like to LA, San Francisco, and New York, kind of there. King of the Hill appeals to other people in between, you know. And it's a more of a universal kind of a family thing people relate to. And so it, it, it's very successful, you know. And, uh, and, and, and Mike is, uh, you know, he does the voice of um, uh, the main character. So he's um, very, very active. What's the premise of the series? It, again, it's this uh, family in Texas, kind of, uh, you know, uh, with a... With a Boy and just the, the regular the uh, uh, interaction with their neighbors and you know, the usual, very boring stuff. That but that's done in a very interesting way. You know, people, situations that people relate to, and and characters that people relate to. Who is the target audience for it? Is it more an adult? It's adults. Yeah, audience? it's a, it's a prime time show, so it, it's adults. And uh, and again, the the ratings are there. And again, kids get drawn in into it because it's animation. And, and again, you know, the, the sun has some things that kids relate to. And, and, and so the, the stories are always, you know, 
out there. So uh, it, it's great. Uh, What's the animation style on that show? Uh, again, it's uh, it's Mike Judge's own style. I mean, that's his way of drawing. And and again, uh, uh, it, it's so unique that uh, you know getting the artist to adapt to that style sometimes it's a it's a it's a challenge because not everybody can work on the show. So uh, again, again, you have to typecast people. You know, get people that uh, fit and, and get get the feel of the style. And, uh, and the look. Well, now, in 1999, you mm -hmm. resigned from Phil Roman, mm -hmm. or Film Roman, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> why, why was that? Well, uh, it's a long story, and uh, uh, the company had got to be very big, corporate, and uh, I felt, I just thought I'd try something uh, on a smaller scale, like when I first started Garfield. And uh, we just dealing directly with the artists and and not with the shareholders, not with uh, the banks and the uh, lawyers and all that. Uh, just go back to my roots. And uh, so so done a couple of projects on that and we're right now I'm doing a couple more. And so it's uh, it, it, it's more, you know, my style where I'm hands on and Did you have any you know. projects already lined up when you left? No. No, no. Uh, it, it just uh, uh, had some ideas, and uh, um, I had some uh, 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 contacts with some friends in, in Europe, and, and we produced one uh, Christmas special based on a, a, on a Spanish property. Uh, uh, there, there's an architect in uh, Barcelona, or there was an architect, uh, uh, Gaudi, Antoni Gaudi, and so we produced a Christmas special based on his style of drawing. We created a world as if you know he would have designed that world and created some characters that live in that world. And, uh, and so the, we produced a special and the special you know, was well received. So now we're producing a, a series of uh, 26 episodes. And in 2000 you directed uh, the video Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. Right, yeah. So now with this new company, you were staying much more hands-on with actually doing yeah. the directing yourself yeah. mm -hmm. and being much more on a creative yes. end. Yes, yeah, because I partnered on, on Grandma. I partnered with uh, Fred Rappaport, who I used to know when he was at CBS. He used to be in charge of uh, primetime uh, programming at CBS. And uh, so then he left, and uh, he's involved in producing live action projects and stuff, but he had this uh, property, so he asked me if, if I was interested in partnering with him, and so we did, we produced it, and uh, it came out a year ago, Christmas, and then it was on again, uh, this last Christmas, uh, Warner Brothers is uh, distributing the, the, the video, so, and it's been on, it was on Warner Brothers this last Christmas. Earlier this year, you returned to film Roman. Roman. <laughs> what changed? Well, uh, the the thing is, uh, I'm not an employee of Film Roman. Uh, I just brought my company over to to the premises, and whereas since I'm still the biggest shareholder of Film Roman, and and I'm I'm working there, kind of uh, if advising if they need my advice, and working with uh, uh, you know, I still have a lot of friends there. And uh, so if there's a project that the two of us can work together, we can do that. Or uh, th there's facilities there that you know, I can avail myself of. Or you know, there, there, there's things that can work either, both ways. So I'm back in my old office and I just uh, with my old friend. So it's uh, very nice. But you're still working on the projects you would set up yes. with Bill Roman Entertainment. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. well, talk about your life and career now. What projects mm -hmm. are you working on that most excite you? Well, right now, I'm just doing two small projects, and I have several in development, and I don't want to talk too much about those in development, because the more you talk about them, the less they come true, you know. <laughs> so uh, one thing I'm doing is that uh, uh, one based on Gaudi, that's, uh, right now it's being produced in uh, London and in uh, Spain. Uh, the money's coming out of London and Spain, so it's got to be spent there. So my involvement is I'm... Uh, uh, 
uh, I give you know, notes on scripts and things like that, and uh, uh, from way out here. And uh, then it's going to be called Phil Roman Presents Howdy Gowdy. And uh, so we're there doing uh, 26 episodes of that. And right now I'm also directing a, a direct-to-video uh, project for um, Mattel and Barbie's uh, little sister. And uh, a couple of adventures she and her little girlfriends go on. So those are keeping me out of trouble. How important is it for you to keep working? Well, I don't know what, how to do anything else. I've been working since I was yay big. And, uh, uh, I mean, to me, you got to keep using your brain because if you don't use it, then there's no motivation, there's no uh, reason to do anything. And I, I enjoy challenges, I enjoy ideas, I enjoy working with creative people. It's very stimulating. And uh, seeing things come to fruition, you know, having things happen, and uh, working on a, on a bigger level, uh, which is not, you know, working with the business part, working with the creative part, working with, uh, and, and, and just making things come, you know, making them happen. Throughout your career, you've earned many honors, including multiple mm -hmm. Emmy and Annie Awards, for mm -hmm. example. What have those awards meant to you? Well, to me, uh, that, that's um, uh, uh, the reward that is given to you by your peers. I mean, it's something that when you're working on it, you, you don't think about that. But the fact that you re when you receive that, it means that somebody was watching and somebody was impressed. And, uh, and the fact that it's your peers, people that you know, you're competing with, th that makes it more meaningful, I think. And because uh, those are things you don't plan, you know, you don't say, I'm, I'm going to do this and I'm going to win an Emmy, because you know, <laughs> you're going to be disappointed. Mm -hmm. But but when it does happen, I mean, it is uh, very, uh, very rewarding. It's uh, it's very, very um, uh, uh, self-satisfying. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to someone starting out as an animator today? Uh, you have to love what you're doing. You have to really want to be part of it because uh, you need that enthusiasm. You need that, that love of the business because it, it should not just be a job. It should be something because, because the rewards are seeing your work come alive on the screen. And uh, because I know that when I was hiring people, uh, I would always, um, uh, young kids would come in to, to uh, uh, apply for work, and uh, if, they, if, I, if I saw some energy, some enthusiasm, some real eagerness in, in there that, God, I really want to work in this business, you know, look around, I said, you know, those are the kind of kids that I would want to hire. Because I always felt that I could always teach them to draw, but I could never teach them to be enthusiastic. And uh, so if, if you, they have that fire in their hearts, then, then they have a lot to offer. And uh, and then be prepared, you know, going to school, going to, because uh, uh, you're going to compete with a lot of people for the, the few jobs there are, and you have to be really, really uh, prepared. So you, you draw and draw and, uh, and, and just keep that enthusiasm going. How has the animation business changed throughout the years? It, it's changed a lot. It's changed in several ways, several times. Because when I first came in, it was mostly um, a theatrical business. Then it became a, a television business. And now it's changing again, like to more, maybe like to an internet kind of a business, although that's not there yet. But, uh, and, and it keeps changing. Uh, uh, the, the business models keep changing. And I think that's what makes it frustrating from a creative point of view is that uh, the, uh, they're uh, selling a show to a network is a, it's difficult now because all the networks own their own animation studios. So to go in and sell a show, you know, uh, Warner Brothers has Warner Brothers, you know, ABC has Disney, or Disney has ABC, one or the other. Um, Nickelodeon has their own, you know, studios and 
so so uh, uh, so making the deals is much more difficult. Uh, but there's still a business there, and finding those businesses that's what the challenging part, and that's uh, that's why I'm still in there. What has been the impact of new technologies such as computers? Uh, it's it's been uh, pretty significant because. Um, uh, there's a lot of things you can do now uh, uh, with, with technology where you can, uh, uh, aside from actually producing the, the, the 3D kind of uh, uh, shows like Shrek and uh, Monsters, aside from that, uh, as far as the regular animated shows, the 2D, the hand-drawn, uh, there's things you can do where, that are, where it used to take maybe three or four days to see a pencil test or to see something. You can see it like almost immediately. You can make changes almost immediately on uh, because of the computer. You got your colors and there you're changing things. Uh, and uh, you can say, I don't like that one. You can change, it, it, it's almost instantaneous. And uh, you can, um, working with overseas, uh, you can set up a system where you can see the work that they've done that day. You can see it in your office here the next morning and make your changes. And th when they go back to work the next morning, they, they go right into it. Whereas before, it used to take time to come over here, clear customs, and you know, it, it's, uh, it's the technology has helped a lot, but uh, that's not the important thing. The, the, the important thing is the creative part, the thinking, because that, that is what makes a show good. It's not the, not the technology. The technology is another, another tool, just another pencil, another way of making things happen a little bit more economically, a little bit more efficiently. What has been the highlight of your career? Oh gosh, so far. The fact that I, <laughs> so far, <laughs> uh, the, the 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 fact that I was able to get into the the business. You know, I mean, I, I feel so fortunate that a lot of the my heroes that uh, I admired before I even got into the business, that I actually got to work with them. I got to know them as friends. I got to, uh, it, it, just the fact that it, it, we, co we connected on a creative level. I mean, that, that's something that I never thought would happen because when you're a young kid, you know, these are names, you think, but all of a sudden, uh, it, you're one of them, and to be accepted as one of them was, I mean, to me, just tremendous. Did you have a mentor? I've had several. Uh, you know, it's, I've had several uh, that uh, I um, uh, I appreciate, um, uh, like John uh, Freeman at uh, at Disney. John Freeman was a you know he helped me tremendously. Uh, Benny Washam, you know, helped me tremendously. And, uh, there was there have been several that have uh, been very, uh, you know, helping in, in, with their experience. And I've had to do the same thing. And I, I, uh, at Filmer, when I had a, an internship uh, program to help kids come in and work with professionals and, you know, during their summer or whenever. And, uh, and a lot of those kids uh, have gone on, you know, uh, they came back and hired them uh, full time, and they've gone on to become directors, designers, and uh, you know, very successful in the business. Uh, not only for film women, but other studios. How would you like to be remembered? Oh gosh, in one minute or less. <laughs> oh god. Well, I, I just uh, that um, that people like my work. You, you know, that, I mean, I, uh, I I take a lot of pride in uh, a lot of things that I've done. And I hope that people enjoy them also, because uh, I, I think that if you do a good job, it shows on the screen. And uh, hopefully, because if whatever you do is going to be there for a long time. And uh, hopefully, people will be enjoying them for a long time. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us today. Well, thank it's been you. Great. Very nice of you. <laughs> thank you.